Hello everyone and welcome to the second lesson in this course of phonology that I started by giving a general idea about the field and how it interacts with similar fields such as phonetics. So I invite those who haven't seen the first lesson to go back to it for a better understanding of what we will be dealing with in the course of the coming lessons. In today's lesson, we are still establishing a solid background of our understanding of the discipline by providing a comprehensive explanation of some key concepts and terms that constitute the cornerstones of our discussion whenever we happen to talk about phonology and or to do phonologic analysis. Following this, the present lesson will be organized as follows. First, I will define the terms vowel and consonant and see how they differ. The same thing will be done for phoneme and allophone. And finally, this lesson will end by providing a definition of the notion of minimal pair. Let's start by vowel. We all know that every language has vowels. But what is a vowel? Vowel is a class of speech sound that includes all sounds, the production of which does not involve any block of the air stream as it comes out from the lungs. In other words, if you produce a vowel sound, let's say, uh, you will notice that the air is freely passed without any restriction that may cause an audible friction. So a vowel sound is a sound that is produced by an open configuration of the vocal tract and with a vibration of the vocal cords and that's why we mark all vowel sounds as voiced. Additionally, the vowel sound is a unit of the sound system that represents the core of the syllable in languages, that is the nucleus. For example, cut is a word that is composed of one syllable. The vowel a uh, is the core or the nucleus of this syllable. It is also important to mention that there are three main types of vowels. Short vowels, long vowels and diphthongs. So let's see each of these. Short vowels. They are the vowel sounds that their production requires a short time and slot. In other words, short vowels are the sounds that require a short duration of time in their production. For example, in the word sit, E is a short vowel because it requires a very short time in slot to be produced. By contrast, long vowels are the vowel sounds the production of which takes longer time than that of the short vowels. That is, their production requires a long time in slot. For example, in the word seat, the vowel E is a long vowel because the production of it takes a longer time than that of the short vowel. And this is indicated by a colon, as you can see. The third category is diphthongs. Diphthongs are the vowel sounds that are produced as a sequence of two vowel sounds. Unlike short and long vowels, whose production is related to how much time they require in their production, the production of deaf thongs is about how many time slots they require. For example, in the word table, the vowel A is a deaf thong because it occupies two time slots, A uh, and E given A. Generally speaking, short vowels are vowels that occupy one short time slot. Long vowels are the vowels that occupy one long time in slot. Diphthongs are the vowels that occupy two time in slots. Consonants. Consonant is a class of speech sounds that are produced with a certain structure of the air stream using speech organs. For example, m, p, and b are consonants in which the air stream is blocked using the lips. It is noteworthy that there are two types of the obstruction or the block of the air stream in the production of consonants. 
The first of which is the total obstruction, or the total block of the air stream. In this case, the air passage is completely blocked at a certain point in the articulation. For instance, if you pronounce the consonants P, M, B, D, K and G, you will notice that the air stream is totally blocked at a certain point in the articulation. The second type of the obstruction is partial obstruction or the partial block of the air stream. In this case, sounds are produced with an incomplete block of the air stream. For example, if you produce the consonants, the consonant sounds F, V, C and SH, you will feel that there is a partial block of the air stream which causes certain friction. Additionally, and unlike vowels, which, as I mentioned earlier, occupy the core of the syllable, consonants occupy the syllable margins. For example, in the word cut, we said earlier that the vowel a uh, is the core or the nucleus of the syllable, but the consonants k and t are the syllable margins. Now let's turn to the notion of phoneme. Phoneme can be defined as the smallest distinctive or contrastive unit in the sound system of a language. It is distinctive in the sense that it creates difference in the meaning of the words. For example, cat and mat are words wherein the sounds k and m are distinct phonemes because if we replace one with another, we will get different meanings. A phoneme, then, is an abstract linguistic unit representing a speech sound that has a function within the sound system of a language. And it is also a part of the speaker's competence. A phoneme is usually represented between slashes to indicate that they are distinctive in nature and it can be contrasted with other sounds in the system. So some phonemes can have different realizations depending on the context they occur in. And these realizations are referred to as allophones. So what is an allophone? An allophone is a variant realization of the phoneme. Unlike phoneme, allophone does not contrast meaning. That is, it does not make difference in meaning. For example, the word issue in English is pronounced as either issue or issue. Here the sounds sh and s are allophones because they don't bring about a difference in meaning. An allophone then is usually described using square brackets to indicate these characteristics. Up till now, there still might be some confusion between what is a phoneme and allophone. So let's see how phoneme and allophone differ through this representation. We know that language is composed of two levels. The abstract level which is located in the mind, and that's what we call competence, and the surface level which is located in speech, and that's what we call performance. So when we speak of a sound that is still in the abstract level, we use the term phoneme. And when we speak of a sound on the level of speech, we use the term allophone. In other words, when we describe sounds as part of our competence, we tend to use phoneme. And once these sounds become part of our performance, we tend to use allophone. So the last notion to define in this lesson is the minimal pair. So minimal pair can be defined as a pair of words that have the same number of sounds and differ only in one sound which make their meaning different. For example, these words 
in English, make minimal pairs. Met with sit, cat with cut, pet with bit, try with cry, etc. As you can see, each of these pairs have the same number of sounds and differ only in one sound which make their meaning different as well. And each of these contrasting sounds is considered as a distinct phoneme because it changes the meaning of the word if we replace one with another. Now we come to the end of this lesson, let's recapitulate what we have gone through. First, we define a vowel as a cluster of sound that includes all sounds that are produced with a free realization of the air stream. And we saw that there are three main types of vowels, long vowels, short vowels and diphthongs. Then we defined consonants as a class of sounds that includes all sounds that are produced with an obstruction or a block of the air stream. And we saw that the obstruction or the block of the air stream is of two types. Uh, partial and total obstruction. We also defined phoneme as the smallest contrastive and distinctive unit of sound. And we saw how it differs from an allophone uh, as it represents uh, its counterpart on the concrete level uh, on the speech. And finally, I defined minimal pair as pair of words that have the same number of sounds and differ only in one sound. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Please leave your feedback in the comment section below. And thank you very much.